Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for Career Tips. So let's quickly begin today's class, which can help you in clearing your phase one of RDS A B N Nabad exams. So guys, this is the timetable for live courses of RDS A B N Nabad. So if you are willing to enroll in any a kind of course, then in my opinion, you should give a try to these courses as well. Because they are really worth it, and don't just believe what I'm saying. You just need to try it out. Just try out the demo videos and everything that we are offering for free of cost, so that you can have a better idea what do we offer in the uh, paid course. Okay. This is our mobile application. Apart from this, these are the sources through which you can connect with us in case you need any kind of help related to the course related to the preparation or in general you are seeking any kind of guidance so these are the channels through which you can connect with us the mobile mail and this is our main website okay now let's begin with the first question so which state has launched the satya nishtha application for the state police force so here guys himachal pradesh option a is the right answer now this application this news in itself is very simple a new application has been launched the name of the application is satyanishtha it aims to basically digitalize the working of the police department and help the police department in resolving the cases in a quick manner so that's the basic idea of this application the next question is which has become the first totally digitally literate panchayat of india so here you have the uh, five options the right option here is pulampur pulampara village panchayat this is the right option now here guys pulampura pulampara village panchayat in tiruvananthapuram tiruvananthapuram district in kerala is the first totally digitally literate panchayat okay so they are well versed with the digital technology so this panchayat is digitally literate panchayat of and yeah it is a very good initiative and at the same time very important question that can be framed in your examination be it your any kind of examination at the po level at esic or whatever examination is this this question you can expect now the third question is what is the total outlay of international finance corporations financing facility for supporting food production so here guys option c is the right answer dollar 6 billion is the total outlay of this facility now what is the news exactly first of all before telling you the news let me show you this uh, smart art so here you need to know that the ifc international finance corporation is the part of the world bank group and what is the task of ifsc it basically provides funding to the private sector so that it can help in resolving the social economic issues okay so providing the funding to the private sector so that the private sector can partake in the social sector okay so that is the basic idea now you will understand its functioning better when we will discuss the news itself how is this organization helping in uh, eliminating the food insecurity by using the private players okay this is what we are going to understand in the news so first of all you need to understand that ifsc has launched a financing facility so obviously under this facility finances will be provided to the private sector now the finances will be restricted or will be capped up to rupees dollar sorry not rupees dollar 6 billion and the purpose of this is to respond to the crisis and help support the food production so basically respond to the food crisis food insecurity that should be removed and for that the private players will be uh, provided support by the ifsc now the financing will be provided through the global food security platform of the ifsc to support sustainable production and the delivery of food stocks to countries affected by the food instability so that's the basic idea behind this financing facility many countries in asia and africa particularly here the countries are struggling with food insecurity almost to the extent of starvation so there in order to tackle this problem ifsc has launched this facility wherein up to 6 billion dollars would be spent so that we can ensure food availability to those people 
the next point here in the news itself is that this fund will be used to support the private sector companies along the food value chain okay so private sector companies along the food value chain would be the companies who are engaged in value addition for example if wheat is grown and uh, the bread manufacturing company is a part of the food value chain because that bread manufacturing company would take the uh, wheat and then create the bread wheat ke lo ya uh, fine flour ke lo whatever it is so it will take from the farmers then it will create the bread then the packaging co company of the bread so all these companies would be a part of the food value chain okay so these companies will be provided support by the ifsc so that the support will be utilized for providing the funding or the food direct food to the countries which need it okay by leveraging the ifscs so coming to the statement so this fund will be used to provide funding or support to the private sector companies by leveraging ifscs sectoral expertise in agri business manufacturing infrastructure and technology as well as the financial sector and trade finance okay so these are the sectors uh, through which ifsc is going to provide the support to these private companies okay not only the finances will be provided to the companies the ifsc will also ensure, will also ensure that the training would be provided to the companies training as in if they need any kind of technical support if they need any kind of marketing strategy or mentorship in that regard so all of that will be ensured by ifsc for those private companies and all that effort should be channelized to the food security challenge only okay that's the basic idea now let's move on to the next question which insurance company has launched the insured india campaign to educate indians on the benefit of life insurance so here guys hdfc life is the right answer so ruthake jio is the tagline of hdfc life and hdfc life has remained in the news frequently so you need to know the tagline of this organization as well so it has launched this in insured india campaign and it is a campaign not a product so here the basic idea is to create awareness among the people so that they can buy more and more health and life insurance products basically the life insurance products because it is specifically a life insurance company not a general insurance company okay so it is going to provide the awareness it is going to create awareness among the people so that they they buy life insurance products more and more that's the basic idea coming to the next question which bank has launched the home vantage, vantage current account facility so here guys we have the five option icici bank hdfc bank of baroda axis bank state bank of india which one is the right answer the right answer is sorry icici bank okay so icici banks uk branch so this is the uk branch of the icici bank and my question from all of you is you have to tell me the current chief of this bank uh, in the comment section now this is a wholly owned subsidiary of the icici bank limited and this bank has launched the home vantage current account now what is this this is basically an account facility for the indian students who want to study in uk that's the basic idea so this account will be opened for the indian students in the uk branch so that they can easily con conduct the transactions by using this account that's the basic idea okay nothing much is there so don't cram your mind with this news nothing else is there apart from this visa debit card will be issued to the students who will open this account and this card will be applicable or can be used at any place in the globe okay that's the um, another feature of this account next question is recently sbi foundation has launched the fourth phase of the sbi gram seva program for adopting 30 remote villages across aspirational districts in six states uh, which are mentioned in the bracket when was the program launched so here guys the right answer is 2017 now this news not only sounds very interesting but it actually is very interesting and at the same time very important for your examination so let's 
know what it is. Okay, so it was launched on the Gandhi Jayanti. So that's just a picture. Okay, so what is it? SBI Foundation. First of all, know this fact that it is the CSR organization of the SBI Bank. Okay. Now this foundation has launched this SBI Gram Seva program back in the year 2017, and right now the fourth phase of this program is being launched. And in this fourth uh, phase, six states have been chosen, and from those six states, the organization has adopted 30 remote villages. Now, what is the basic idea of this scheme? Why has the bank adopted these? villages and what is the bank going to do with the villages after adopting them. So basically the basic idea here is to engage in the infrastructure development of these villages. That's the basic idea and the, CS, uh, the CSR arm of SBI, this SBI foundation is going to help in development of these villages and that is why it has launched this Gram Seva program. Now one more thing that is of much much more importance that thing is that this uh, the villages which are adopted under this program, those villages belong to the aspirational districts. On that note, you are going to tell me how many aspirational districts have been identified by the Niti Aayog as of now. Okay, so how many aspirational districts are there? That is your question. You are going to present it in the comment section. Now coming back to the news. So six states. Okay, so we have 30 villages from six states and these 30 villages are the aspirational uh, district villages. Okay, so they are from the aspirational district. Now the st states are Haryana, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Punjab, Tamil Nadu and West Bengal. Okay, so I guess there should not be any problem for all of you to remember uh, these states because this is guys important, particularly if your any examination related to SBI is coming up. Okay, so if you are an SBI PO aspirant or clerk ex ex uh, aspirant, then you need to remember the states as well, okay, because this is SBI foundation only. Now, something more on the pro program itself. So, it was launched in 2017, and the aim of this program is to emphasize the holistic development of the villages by uh, intervention in the education, healthcare, livelihoods, and infrastructure. So, largely these areas are touched upon by the SBI Foundation through its Gram Seva program. Okay, the program has so far adopted 100 villages across 60, 16 states in three phases. This is a very important statement, guys. So, note it down if you are particularly an as SBI aspirant. Okay. The next question is, in which country has Google established its first cloud region? So here Greece is the right answer. So Google is basically trying to build upon the cloud computing. So in uh, as a step towards that aim only, it has established a cloud region in Greece to boost the efforts of uh, of the country to become a world cloud computing hub okay so that's the basic idea nothing much is there only three words are important for you to remember first is google second is its first cloud region and third is greece okay so these are the three keywords from this news that you need to stick in your heads okay the next question is who has been appointed as the new governor of Meghalaya. So here guys, B.D. Mishra, who uh, is a former brigadier, he has been appointed as the governor of Meghalaya. So basically it's an additional charge which has been given to this brigadier. Uh, at present, he is already the uh, governor of Arunachal Pradesh. Okay. So do remember, now B.D. Mishra is handling two positions. Army Valley personality, a copy. <laughs> okay. The next question is former German Chancellor Angela Merkel has won the United Nations Refugee Agency's prestigious Nansen Refugee Award, receiving praise for her determination to protect asylum seekers while in office. In which year was the award instituted? So, guys, the award was instituted in 1954. 
So the news you have read it in the question itself. Former German Chancellor Angela Merkel has won this award. Who is the current Chancellor of Germany? This is again your question. Tell me in the comment section below. Now here, what are the keywords that you need to remember? Of course, the reason for which she has got this award is not at all important. It's it has been mentioned just for your awareness. Why has she been chosen chosen for this award? Now coming back to the keywords. First is. German Chancellor, former German Chancellor Angela Merkel, and second is Nansen Refugee Award given by the UN uh, Refugee Agency. Okay, so here again we have the three keywords from this news. Now this award was created in 1954. Okay, that's again an important fact, and it was named after. the norwegian arctic explorer not a very significant fact for you to remember because the name nansen in itself is very similar okay i mean the name the award has been named after this person so obviously the name would not be asked in the question if the examiner in is in a mood to test you to test the depth of your knowledge then the max question that he can create out of this statement is the country to which this person belonged so you need to remember that the award has been named after a person who belongs to norway okay so norwegian arctic explorer the wo jinke naam pe ye award rakha the 10th question is who has been named the fih rising star of the year 2021 to 22 in the women's category so it is from india mumtaz khan and she is a teenager so that's again a moment of proud for all of us so indian teenager mumtaz khan has won this fih rising star of the year now where is the headquarter of this international hockey federation again this is your question tell me as far as the men's category is concerned so timothy clement from france he has won the men's award So here, guys, this video ends. I hope you have liked the content provided by me. And if you find any kind of uh, flaw in the video, or if you have any kind of feedback, then do mention it in the comment section below because I do read your comments. I do pay attention to the comments that you provide, the feedbacks that you provide, and the person who told me to shift back to the previous. format of ppt that person has already noticed it that i read your comments okay so if you feel anything that you need to discuss with me you are free to mention it in the comment section thank you so much guys for watching this video have a good day